Welcome back to the Deliberate Leaders Podcast. I am your host and executive business coach, Allison Dunn. Our topic today is a lesson in comfort, peace, and freedom. Our guest is Ken Rusk. He is a best-selling author, entrepreneur, and motivational speaker who achieved Wall Street Journal's best-selling status with Blue Collar Cash during the pandemic, no less. He hosts the podcast, Comfort, Peace, and Freedom, and empowers individuals through his impactful course, The Path to a Successful Life. Ken, thank you so much for joining us here today. Ali, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. I love to kick these off with a deliberate conversation. So what would be your number one leadership tip for our listeners? Uh, don't try to do it all yourself. Yeah, I, I can tell you that um, y- your, your goal should be to make yourself, and this is going to be a long point, but your goal should be to, olymp- to make yourself almost irrelevant to the day-to-day of your company. And that's very controversial because some people can't let go. Okay. They have this whole boss ego thing, but the more irrelevant you are, the more you have the ability to be free to do all the other things you want to do, which is look for new, new revenue streams, uh, look for new efficiencies, look for better ways to do things, rip the roof off your company, look back down upon it and see what needs fixed, changed, updated, or whatever. You can't do that. If you're this Superman or superwoman in the middle, trying to make, the hay all the time. You have to allow other people to grow. And when you do that, your company will go to heights that you never even imagined. Is other than ripping the roof off, Ken, is there another way to have that be something that people can go, oh, that's my first step to working towards that? Yeah, I would just say you have to decide. I'll just tell you a quick, a quick lesson that happened to me. So I love the concept of the entrepreneur. I love to surround myself with people who say, hey, Ken, do you mind if I run this department the way I would want to run it? And, you know, that means accounts payable, accounts receivable, the the level of success that they enjoy, the the amount they can invest in it. And um, it it, kind of gives them some autonomy to run that. So. I have several of those people in our organization that all that all runs various departments. And, and several years ago, I was sitting at a table with them and I had a number in my mind, Allie, of where I wanted the company to go to next revenue wise. And I had them all write down a number and tell me, well, where do you think where do you think we can take this company to what level? How high can we get it to go? And um, I said, because once you tell me that number, I'm going to share the difference between now and then with all of you. Okay. So you're going to be creating your own wealth here. And um, once you know it, every one of them put down a number that was at least $2 million annually higher than the number I had. So (laughs) be very careful that you don't end up putting your own ceiling on yourself and you might be literally the, the anchor of your own company. So be careful about that. That is such a fantastic story that drives home <laughs> that drives home your point. So thank you, Ken. I really appreciate that a lot. You're welcome. Um, in your book, Blue Collar Cash, which I was going to ask you who you wrote it for, but I think the title may tell us, um, I assume. Um, you emphasize the, the importance of clear goals. Um, so how can individuals, regardless of their background, effectively set and pursue meaningful goals to create a successful life? First off, the title was not my original title. That was the publisher's title. I actually okay. had a title. My title was Comfort, Peace, and Freedom, A Ditch Digger's Guide to, uh, I'm sorry, my title was The Path, A Ditch Digger's Guide to Comfort, Peace, and Freedom. And um, they didn't really like that title so much, so they changed it to Blue Collar Cash. It, you know, the thing about goal setting is Everybody uses the word goal as though it's one of the most overused and most, I should say, vague terms that that in our English language today. And it, it is just because it gets so over. So, you know, I need a goal for this and a goal for that. I mean, there's all types of goals. Here's the way I look at it. A goal is nothing but a dream, a hope or a wish unless there's a precise and clear path to getting there. And that's where people fail because they all have these, again, these these wonderful dreams and wishes and hopes, and they have them and they think that that is good enough. Like somehow through osmosis or through they just, you know, the the caring for this thing that it's just going to happen. Well, 
if you don't have a crystal clear brochure of what that goal is, and I know I'm dating myself when I say brochure, but for sure. <laughs> we, we used to go to the car dealer and you get this brochure and you'd see the guy in the back of the pickup truck and he's throwing hay bales and, you know, he's all this really cool stuff. And you're like, man, I'd be so cool if I owned that pickup truck. Right. But there was a reason that they did all that. You took it home. You, you visualized it constantly. You, you had it on your nightstand and you mm -hmm. dreamed about it and you got really specific. It's the same thing with goals. You need to create an actual picture of whatever it is that you want, because your brain is so incredibly powerful in attracting yourself to that eventuality once it sees something over and over and over and over again. So where people, where people drop the ball is they have these things stuck in their heads, but they just roam around in like dreamland. Okay. And they never really become reality. Yeah. Um, I, I, I was laughing at you because you did use brochure, but there's just such a powerful um, outcome in like a uh, reticular activating system that gets engaged when it can be so visual that you can picture it. You can picture elements of it. Um, I don't think I've ever talked about like a vision board or, um, anything like that on the show. Is that one, is that a tool that you suggest people use? It's something that we use in our coaching practices. Matter of fact, I have mine right here. I'm not going to show it to you because mine's personal, but I, I look at it. I look at it every day. Well, I, I can tell you this. So the answer is yes, we do. Yeah. We yeah. take it one step further and, and everyone, if they're chasing a goal around here, and I use the word chase on purpose. So okay. if they're chasing a goal, they, they, they put it up on this huge, black glass board that we have it's it's like eight by eight feet it's it's giant and we have these these markers these um neon markers and okay. it's kind of like the ones you'd see in front of a mexican restaurant when they write the margarita special of the night you know they make it all colorful so we we actually put have them write these goals up on the board so that not only they can see it everyone else can see it and they can cheer them on okay. so yeah th th that's kind of how it works now when it comes to how the mind works, I, I had a very interesting con conversation with Jarek Robbins, who's Tony Robbins' son, about this mm -hmm. very subject. You know, I always knew that if you visualize something, your brain would attract itself to it. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, but I never really knew there was an actual science behind it. And one of the things that he told me was very interesting. He said, the more you picture something, the more of these little neurons that fire visions going back and forth in your brain, the quicker, the faster, and almost to the point where it's one solid thought. And what happens is your, your mind believes that it already owns this thing. So it sets out to confirm that by having your subconscious, your body, and your, your actions dictate what it would take to go get that thing. So don't discount the power of your visions, especially if they're up on the wall where you can see them twice a day or three times a day, whatever. Mm -hmm. That will automatically, you know, through the, they, they call this osmosis, but that's all fancy stuff. The more you stare at something, the more chances you have to go getting it. It's just that simple. I think of it as a thing that you, um, the more you are, can visualize and look at something that you are aiming at, the more you'll recognize it when it gets in front of you or the opportunity to obtain it. Absolutely. There's, there's pathways yeah. to all these things. Yeah. And if you just recognize that, wow, that might be something that's leading me towards that eventuality, then you're more likely to follow. It. Yeah, for sure. Um, you wrote um, blue collar cash during the pandemic. And um, you said that I think you're, it's almost implied like during challenging times during that full year, I probably read more, books, bought more books, listened to more books than I ever had, interviewed more authors than um, I had in my entire life prior to that. I, sad to say, but it's probably true. So um, was was it difficult to make a Washington Street bestsellers list during the pandemic? Because I, probably everyone released their book at that time, right? Well, I have to tell you, they 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 told me they said we, we weren't sure that we wanted to release it during the pandemic because they okay. they weren't quite sure what the pandemic was going to do towards books you have to remember that when they're going to release a book they talk about that eight months in advance right so it was released before the first person was sick 
I mean, it was okay. it was planned to be released. So gotcha. We, we actually released it once, and then we ended, we released it again the following year, and that's when it became the bestseller. It um, it okay. was doing really well during the pandemic, and then it pushed it over the edge uh, in that second year. So yeah, it was great. Okay. Um, who who did you write the book for? Interesting story. So my daughter suffered from, she went through a bout of cancer when she was 12. And um, I just remember being in all these doctor's offices and oncology offices and all the stuff that you go through when, when you have that. And I wouldn't wish that upon anybody, believe me. Very scary time for her mother and I for the, for the following five years, as it was for her. And I just remember saying, OK, well, if I was going to write her a very long letter of what she should be chasing, what should she look for in life? I mean, what what is the ultimate nirvana? I kept coming back with these three words, Allie. It was comfort, peace and freedom. And I couldn't get rid of these words. I couldn't get them out of my head. And then they started forming this triangle in my mind, like they were almost in, interdependent um, terms, concepts. So I really went into that for a little while because I, I believe that not everybody wants, you know, a rap star career and, you know, a mega yacht and 15 cars and a McMansion. I, people, they, they want what they want. And the cool thing is they know what that is. And when they get there, they think, man, if I could live like this, that would be really cool. I mean, that would be my comfort, peace and freedom thing. So I really went down that that path for a while and wrote this long letter to her. And then I ended up talking about stories of friends of mine that had overcome these unbelievable circumstances as she had to overcome in order to become okay. successful. That just lended itself to 80,000 words. And pretty soon I had 12 legal pads full of ink and there I was. Um, that's a beautiful story. Uh, thank you. How was your daughter today? She's great. In fact, she just had um, a little baby girl last week. So it's Aww. our first granddaughter. <laughs> Congratulations. That's thank you. awesome. <laughs> Grandbabies are the best. They are. Uh, yeah. They I'm are. not too sure I'm good with the term grandpa yet because I don't feel like I'm that old, but I think we're going to go with pops. So we're going to go with something a little more hip. <laughs> there you go. I, I struggled with what name to, I wanted to be called when I became a grandmother as well. So anyway, I, you're, I do understand. you're a grandmother. I am. Yeah. That's not possible, but go it, ahead. It is. <laughs> I, I assure you. Um, thank you though. Uh, your podcast comfort, peace and freedom obviously explores like the, this three pillar idea of a fulfilling life. Um, I think striking that balance is a really difficult thing that uh, people often struggle doing. So how can people pursue their, their goals and also strike this balance that is also brings fulfillment? I, I think it's all about filling these buckets. You know, we talk about buckets here at, at our company because we use okay. a lot of buckets. We carry a lot of things around in buckets and, you know, we buy, we buy these buckets from pickle factories and oil. I mean, just stuff that they're getting rid of. So we, we, Oh, literally, buckets. literally, okay. literally buckets, five gallon buckets. Okay. And um, I always thought that just like investing or anything else, you need to re really be balanced. You need to fill all these buckets very equally. You need to okay. feel, you, you need to, you know, to, to fill your, your own personal buckets, your family buckets, your charity bucket, your health bucket, your hobby or sport bucket, your interaction bucket. I mean, you need to fill all those things very equally. And, and I think when people decide that they are the ones that choose how to balance those things, yeah. most people think they're out of control, that, that these things are out of their grasp or it's out of their control. No, no. You know what your favorite color is. You know what your favorite car is. You know what your favorite dog is, pet, cat, dog, what color, what would you name it? You know what your favorite vacation looks like. You know all these things. Nobody else does. So why are you taking control to say, I'm going to design the rest of my life. I'm not going to live at the effect of other people and their wishes. I'm not going to let life just happen to me. I'm going to happen to life by controlling these buckets and deciding what I'm going to put in each one. It's up to me to do that. And nobody knows this but you. So why are you allowing any other influence to create that picture than yourself? You're the best at it. You know what it is. So sit down, make it right, look at it, figure out how you want to do it, set, get it up on the wall, 
and then allow your body and your mind to take you powerfully to that eventuality. Um, it took me a long time to recognize how much power I have about everything in my life and owning um, how it goes. And I really, I honestly feel like our younger generations, my children, um, they have a much better handle on it. Uh, so maybe we're speaking to them. Maybe we're speaking to someone more my age, maybe older than us. Um, how, if I don't, if I don't believe that I have control of my buckets, what are some of the things that people should work on first as to figure out which bucket may be not helping or out of balance or, you know, like that, the one that they may feel least, the least control over? I think what the, would you suggest? Yeah, the very first thing you need to think about is the opposites of things, right? So mm -hmm. there is joy is the opposite of anger, okay? And and um, admiration is the opposite of jealousy. And, um, you know, happiness is the op opposite of sadness, obviously. Um, you know, being brave, feeling brave is the opposite of fear, right? So you just need to, you need to understand that there are probably 20 emotions that you go through on a daily basis or could go through. But you also have to understand that those are a choice that you're recommending to yourself, okay? And they all can't fit in that bucket at the same time. It's like a really busy bar that has a line out the door and you're the bouncer, okay? Emotions come in, emotions go out, and the bouncer chooses how that works, right? The doorman. So understand that, you know, there's no way you're going to be spontaneous if you're just frustrated and overly busy. There, there's no way you can be that way. So those things are choices. Sit down and, under, and, and write down. I even have this in my course. You can sit down and write down which emotions that you tend to overuse that are negative and which ones you wish you had more of that are positive and just start plugging those in and get rid of the other ones. It's, it's like doing the laundry. I mean, it can actually happen. So I try to keep things really simple. I don't try to get like all PhD on people, just cross off the ones you don't want, circle the ones you do want, start plugging yeah. those in and live a much better life that way. Yeah. Um, you just made that. So some Amplified conceptually, like I'm feeling this is what frustrates me. This is what's me, what makes me happy. And then just like start to figure out how do you stop that and make this happen. My technology frustrates me. <laughs> Some of our technical issues, but pre podcast. So um, <laughs> um, thank you. That's such a great tip. Uh, let's um, dive into your course for a little bit. So, The Path to a Successful Life is the name of your course. And I assume that this is guiding people um, in planning their futures to some degree. Um, can you share some key principles from the course that have been proven to uh, provide that transformation and create more purpose for people? Well, first off, I can tell you this. So, so many times I've, I've been, I think your number 203 podcasts I've been on in the last 18 months. And um I can tell you a, a lot of times you have a beautiful background, but a lot of times I see people with a shelf full of books behind them and I will ask them, did you Mine read over there? Yeah. Did you read that book? And oh yeah, I read it. Well, how did it help you? You know, I don't really remember, but it was a really good book. Right. So yeah. it, I heard someone say the other day, is this self-help or shelf help? Right. So um, yep. I got, I, I wanted to make sure Allie, that, that my book was going to actually change someone's life. And, and I didn't want people to have to rely on the old, someday I'm going to implement Ken's ideas into my life. I wanted them to say, uh oh, here comes this course. Now I have to do it. I have to do it right now. I have to do it today, this afternoon. So the simple things that we just talked about, I put in this course so people can understand, you know, if I get through eight hours of his course, which is eight one hour sessions, there's no way I can't think the way I, I, there's no way I can't think better. I can't be better. I can't be more in control of my life. And um, it all starts with what the hell do you want it to look like? I mean, let's start with right now. What do you want the rest of your life to look like? Let's draw all those things out, make them crystal clear, build that brochure. Okay. Start that puzzle, if you will. And then we'll start filling in one piece or one path or one step at a time. And once you have that, 
be very careful who you choose to surround yourself with when it comes to sharing those things, because there is a whole group of people. And I write about this in the book too. There's a whole group of people who just can't wait to keep you right where they are, which is in someday land, you know, like, yeah, someday we're going to do that, but that day never comes. And you start saying to them, man, I'm going to be proactive. I'm going to start gaining on my life. I'm going to start doing and fixing and achieving these things. They're like, whoa, 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 whoa. You can't go there. We want you back with us so we can all commiserate for the rest of our lives, right? So be very careful who you choose to share that with, because if that person isn't 100% hand on your shoulder, pick you up when you stumble, okay, convince you when you get frustrated, change that and find someone who will be supportive like that. In the book, I write about the first time I jumped off the really super high dive at the pool, if I wouldn't have had my four buddies down below all cheering me on, there is no way I would have ever jumped off that board. I just wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. um, th there's just so much power in sharing and having people that are supportive. So my one tip would be once you're done with your vision board, once you're done with that, that, that path or that picture, find someone who loves it as much as you do and is going to keep you and in, 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 in align you and straighten you out uh, to make that stuff happen. Yeah. I, um, I, I know, I know that there are definitely listeners who have people in their lives who are in some day land. Um, what happens if, what are your suggestions on how they expand that circle? If they don't find people who are, you know, like the cheerleaders behind them, like go get it. Yes. Like sell, you know, want to celebrate that. Every one of those people admires somebody that they know yeah. that's close by. Every one of those people says, wow, that guy's got it together or she's really got her act together or wow, look at all the things that they're accomplishing, right? Go go to those people, get as close as you can, as close as you can with those people. Ask mm -hmm. to take them out to lunch, okay? Um, do the proactive things you need to get closer to those people. I, I hang out with people that try to make me better. I hang out with people that, are, that I, I, I perceive to have their, a lot of things on the ball. And then I try to emulate some of the things that they do. I, I try to play with golfers that are better than I am. It just improves my whole outlook, my whole game, my whole possibility. So it's just one of those things where, you know, I, I was just speaking to a whole bunch of, of gals who were in prison, believe it or not. And th their, their one question to me was, how do I, make sure that the things you're telling me to do, I continue to do. And I said, well, start by finding, you got to get rid of anybody around you who helped you get here. <laughs> okay. I mean, anyone who was involved in getting you to this place cannot be part of this future thing for you. Um, and it's, it's just so true. So find the people in your life that you do know that, and, and by the way, they're going to love the fact that you recognize this in them. They're going to be happy to sit down and talk with you. They're going to be happy to mentor you because it, it's kind of a cool thing to say, wow, I've made it. Now look at who I, who, who else can I take with me and bring me along on this journey? So, yeah, I, I would say that's your most effective route. Okay. Great tip. Um, are there, I just, that was my final question, but I just wanted to make sure that I asked, is there a particular gem inside of your book that you haven't already shared that you would also want to bring forward in this podcast? I would just say that you, you don't live to work. Okay. You work so that you can live. And um, I don't think you should live an if then life, you know, if I go to high school and if I get good grades and if I go to college and if I get a degree and maybe I got a scholarship and if that eventuality gets me a good job, well, then I can start living my life wrong. I want to know what your then is right now. Okay. I want to know what the work to live looks like right now. I need to know that because you need to know that you have never gotten in your car, backed it out of the driveway, put it in drive and went, where the heck am I going? You always have a path or a plan for all these other things in life. If you're that good at planning that route or that even that next vacation or whatever it might be, plan your life. It's so much more fun to live a life of anticipation than one of wonder. And I hope things happen to me. Great, great reflection. Ken, I just want to thank you so much for our time together today. Everyone who's listening, I will include a link 
to the Blue Collar Cash book um, so that you can go pick yourself up a copy. Thank you so much, Ken. Thank you, Ellie. I appreciate it. 